So you're the new owner of the shiny generic shooter starter project on the Unreal Engine Marketplace. You've fired it up, you've shot some stuff, but now you're ready to add in your own weapons. Let's talk about that. First, let's go over the base weapon blueprint system. Inside generic shooter blueprint logic weapons, you will find three base weapon blueprints. The first is BP base weapon, and this is where the base logic is defined for all weapons. This handles attaching the weapon meshes to the player, handles core mechanics such as equipping, throwing, basic state management, network replication, ammo, timing, visuals, and many other useful things. This blueprint defines everything except what to do when a weapon is fired, meaning this knows how to do everything except firing a bullet or launching a projectile. This behavior is to be defined in child classes. We won't be going in depth into how all this works, but one important thing to note is that in every weapon blueprint, there are a set of config variables. Any variable in a config category is meant to be tweaked and tuned to your liking. With these variables, you can make a fully automatic rocket launcher, a rapid fire pistol, a single shot shotgun, or any combination of settings that you would like. The next is BP base weapon instant hit. This blueprint defines instant hit bullet mechanics such as recoil, number of hits for things like shotguns, bullet impacts, and replicating those mechanics across the network. If you want to make a new bullet based weapon, making a child of this blueprint is a good place to start. The next is BP base weapon projectile. This blueprint is the projectile counterpart to instant hit. Instead of firing bullets, Weapons derived from this blueprint will fire projectiles, which are separately defined and have their own behaviors. Projectile weapons will be covered in a different tutorial. If you navigate your content browser to the Generic Shooter Weapons Common folder, you'll see that I have supplied some weapon templates for you to take a look at or even derive new weapons from. These include a pistol, rifle, a rifle converted to a shotgun, a grenade launcher, and a rocket launcher. In this folder, you'll also find a folder called Weapon Factories, and these are weapon spawn points that I'll cover in a different tutorial. The templates defined here are the ones that you see laying around in the test map, and the pistol and rifle templates are assigned to your player character by default. If you want to change the default weapon assignment, you can do so in either the base BP player character blueprint or your own derived player character in the config weapons category of variables. So let's add a rifle, shall we? For this tutorial, we are going to be using the prototype weapons asset found on the marketplace. Although we are using this specific asset, this process is generally the same for any weapons that you would like to add. The first step is to add your weapon assets to your project. In the case of prototype weapons, we can use the add to project dialog. Because prototype weapons doesn't officially support 4.8 at the time of this video, we're going to have to enable the show all projects checkbox and find our project in the list. Once it is added, you should see the prototype web folder in your content browser. For the sake of this tutorial and organization, I will be making a new folder called Tutorial Weapons where I will be defining our new weapon assets. To do this, right click on the root content folder and click New Folder to name your folder Tutorial Weapons or any other name that you would like. The next thing to do is to create our weapon blueprint definition. For this example, I will be basing our new weapon off of the rifle template. So to create a new rifle, navigate to Generic Shooter, Weapons, Common, Rifle. And in this folder, you will see a blueprint named BP Rifle. Right click this blueprint and choose Create Child Blueprint Class. This will create a new child blueprint, which I will name BP Proto Rifle. However, you can name yours whatever you would like. After creating this, I'm going to immediately move it to our new Tutorial Weapons folder we made earlier so that our content browser is less cluttered. You can do this by clicking and dragging the new blueprint to the folder we made in the content browser folder list and be sure to choose move and not copy. Now that we've created a new rifle blueprint and we have our prototype weapons asset pack already imported, let's assign our new rifles mesh to that of our prototype rifle mesh. To do this, first open up the new rifle blueprint by double clicking it. Every weapon consists of a third person and a first person weapon mesh. However, these can be identical, which is the case for this tutorial. To assign the third person mesh, select the 3P mesh component in the components list and find the skeletal mesh variable. Assign this to your new weapon mesh. In the case of prototype weapons, this is the prototype assault rifle skeletal mesh found in the prototype web folder. In the case of prototype assault rifle, this mesh was wrongly made as it faces down the Y axis instead of facing down the standard X axis. 
Because of this, for it to work with the supplied animation set, we are going to need to rotate it. If you have your own animations, this may not apply to you. If your weapon already points down X, you can skip this next step. It is better to rotate the base mesh than to rotate it within Blueprint, as the weapon blueprints do various rotation calculations for things such as attaching it to a player's arms, and these will look bad if the supplied meshes are facing down the wrong axis. The easiest way to do this is through the Reimport Transform settings. Open up the mesh, scroll down in the Details pane until you find Reimport Transform Import Rotation. Set yaw to negative 90. Now reimport settings only work if you have a source file to import from. So what we can do is we can export this mesh to the desktop and then reimport the newly exported file. You can export the mesh by right clicking the mesh asset in the content browser and choosing asset actions export. Once exported, in the mesh asset window, choose the import mesh button and import your exported file. This should rotate the weapon mesh so that it's now facing down X. If you go back to your rifle blueprint, your mesh should now be pointing down X. Because we are using the same mesh here for third person and first person, let's go ahead and assign the first person mesh to our newly rotated and corrected mesh the same way we did the third person mesh. To do this, select the 1P mesh component in the components list and assign prototype assault rifle to the skeletal mesh property. Now that we have our weapon mesh assigned, let's add it to the test map so we can see what it looks like. In the test map, there are actors placed in a level that are known as weapon factories. These weapon factories simply spawn weapons of a given class and will respawn them if taken after a set time. Let's go ahead and assign one of these weapon factories to our new weapon. To do this, select the weapon factory in the level and in the details pane, find the weapon class variable. Click this dropdown and set it to the new weapon blueprint. Because I named mine BP Proto Rifle, this is what I should see in the list. Once that is assigned, hit play and pick up your rifle. If you are using the prototype weapon rifle, you'll notice that it doesn't align itself to the hands correctly, but it does work. This is because my supplied animations rely on the weapon being attached to the hand bone and then being offset from zero to match. However, the prototype weapon rifle does not have this offset. If you have your own animations, you are likely to have your own offset or to have your weapon zeroed en route. But if you'd like to use the supplied animations, I have added some offset variables you can use to move your first person mesh around without needing to move your mesh's root in a 3D package such as Max, Maya, or Blender. These can be found by searching for offset in the class defaults pane. The 1P arm attach offset is for offsetting the first person weapon mesh relative to your character's first person mesh, or simply moves your weapon relative to your player's arms. The 1P arm offset moves your arms and your weapon together. The 1P arm ADS offset moves your weapons and arms together when you're aiming down sight. So that this way you can perfect your mesh's lineup with the center of your screen if your animations are off a little bit. None of these settings affect third person placement. So if you are having third person placement issues, you should move the root bone of your weapon mesh in a 3D package such as Max, Maya, or Blender. To assist in finding proper ADS offsets, if you search for crosshair in the class defaults, you will find a setting called Always Show Crosshair. Enable this to render the first person crosshair at all times so you can better judge your ADS lineup. For the prototype assault rifle mesh, I find that a 1P arm attach offset with a location of 800 and an ADS offset of 0, negative 9, 1.5 looks pretty decent. Getting the weapon to look right is the bulk of the work. Once that is done, if you want to do fun stuff like change the ammo count or fire rate, those settings are all exposed in various config categories in the class defaults window. For example, if you want a slower rate of fire, change the time between shots variable from 0.1 to 0.3, and you'll have a much slower firing rifle. To turn it into a shotgun, change rays per shot from 1 to 10, and it'll fire 10 rays per shot, causing 10 impacts. This is Michael Aller here, and thanks for purchasing the Generic Shooter Asset Pack. May you have an unlimited number of weapons with infinite ammo. Bye.